Hi everyone, today we are going to be working on this cups page which is from 30 Days of Creativity. Now I have been following Johanna's videos and tutorials, so these two cups I have already done following the tutorials that she did. So this one was her live that she did on Monday and she coloured exactly the same cup as she did for her recorded video which she'd put out in the morning. I did the live first because I hadn't had time to do the morning one. So I just drew it on this cup and did it. Now when Johanna does her videos, I feel quite confident and I draw away and I feel okay and I can cope with it. But now I'm sitting here looking at this blank page, not so easy. So I have some little cheats and easy ways to help me to cope with um, filling in all these blank space. And hopefully it will also help you. Now, firstly, to let you know, I've picked these Arteza pencils. Now, these are Arteza Premium, and these are the colours I've been using for these. Um, there's a bit of dark purple. So this, I did use the Stedler Ergosoft for those. There's a bit of purple. But I'm going to pick this colour palette from this one. Now, Johanna was using her Arteza, and obviously I had to guess what she was using because she, uh, she has a different... She doesn't tell us, and she also has different colours in her tube of Arteza Premium pencils than I do. So I have picked the peach. Now I know some have peaches and cream which would probably be as good. This is a plum purple. I um, This is the sapphire yellow. It's quite a creamy yellow you can see. And these two, this is the moss green. It's quite an olivey colour and the lime green. Okay so that's the palette I'm going to use for all of the cups on this page. So you could do similar, you could watch and then think about what different colours you might want to use. So, let's make a start at the top. I don't know how well this is all going to fit under the tripod, so I'm going to uh, just show you bits and bobs. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to have time to colour every cup. What I'm going to do is talk you through what I'm going to do for each one. My light is a bit pale. I think that's better. Talk you through what I'm going to do for each one. Do a little bit. And then I'm going to um, do it in my own time and put some pictures up at the end of the video once I've finished it so you can have a look. Or else, like, you don't want to watch me colour seven cups. I haven't got time, I'm afraid, to do it all right now. I've got to do some... It's supposed to be working, but we won't mention that. So this cup has got a little rim or brim on it. So we're going to colour that in a different colour and this base and the handle. And we're going to colour those in a slightly different colour to the rest of the cup. What I think I'm going to do is take my green, so this is my darker green, which is the moss green, and I'm going to start the end of here and put quite a, a lot of layers and then less layers towards the middle and the same here. This is my sort of colouring technique, isn't it? I do this a lot and I'm going to do the same on this bottom part like this. And the handle, I'm going to do it darker here, nearer to the cup. And then start to fade that a little bit. Do the same on the top. And fade that there. Then grab the lighter green, which for me is the lime green. Oh, it doesn't want to show you. Oh, that's a bit glary. There we go. And then just start where you've started to fade the green. Go over the top of that with quite a hard um, amount of layers and then reduce it towards the centre and just have a little bit, the tiniest bit in the middle. Do the same for this one. Now if you don't like this colour, I don't think I've got any green marks, maybe one, you can uh, do, do a completely different colour, it doesn't matter. But have a watch and have a think, you might not I've seen so many people have already started decorating and doodling on their mugs and it's amazing. The sort of confidence that people have is fantastic. Okay, those two haven't blended in that well. So I'm going to go back to my moss green and, and drop it. No, and uh, just do a few light layers. Excuse me. Hang on. Sorry, I stopped the camera. 
excuse me, because I felt a sneeze coming, so I thought I would just stop and uh, blow my nose and continue. So I'm just blending that in a little bit better, like that. Now for the main part of this mug, um, I'm going to do all over with this um, peach colour. Sorry, you can't really see it. There, peach. And do well, I'm just going to show you a tiny bit. Do it harder here on the edge and then fade towards the middle, rather like this one. And I'm going to do that all over the whole mug. So it's going to be lighter here and I'm just going to reduce the layers and pressure to go towards the centre. I'm doing this really quickly and the same here, more here and less towards the middle and I'm going to do that all the way along. I don't want to leave any white but it's going to be, I want it to look shiny. I don't know whether green and orange go together. You can see the idea, I'm building up the layers and then doing less as we get towards the centre. And we can do that across the whole mug. I haven't finished that, I'm going to do a lot more layers, but I'm going to leave it there for fear of you getting absolutely bored silly. So there's the first one. And as I say, I'm going to finish them and I will put some, what I'm going to do, I'll take a close up photo of each one when they're done so that, and put them all at the end so you can have a look and then you can sort of freeze frame and have a look and have a study of it and think about whether it's something you want to do. This one we're going to do in stripes. Now, if you want to get even stripes, the best thing to do is to use a ruler. Now, I don't want it to look dead even like it's drawn with a ruler but I don't want it to look really strange so I'm just going to measure my cup and it is roughly three centimeters and so I might just do three stripes so about roughly a centimeter each so I'm going to draw a mark there and a mark there like that now I need my stripes to be parallel with the top of the mug. Luckily these mugs are drawn flat, we're facing straight onto them so they're easy. Sometimes we see inside the mug and then it's a little more tricky. So I want a line going here. So I take my ruler down, make it parallel-ish and draw a line here. Now what I want to do is make sure that blob is inside the section that's going to be this colour and then I can just colour the this section in here, this colour, and I'm going to fade it towards the middle again, like with that one next to us, so harder here, and lighter towards the middle. Now again, this is going to take a good few layers and time to get it looking smooth. But you can see I'm trying to make sure that line doesn't look too hard. You could draw that line in with a pen if you want to, but my confidence of using a pen is so low that I'm just drawing it in with pencil. Also, some people aren't keen on pen lines, they prefer to white them out. So if you make your line with your pencil, you don't need to worry about that. So uh, that's another little thing. So I'm just going to keep building up those layers on the edge and fading it in towards the middle a little bit. And then I need to do the same with this one. I'm not going to do that now. And with this piece at the bottom, I shall do that in this pink. The central one, I'm going to use my peachy colour and I will also use it for the saucer and for the handle. I'll show you the handle because that's different. All these bits are gonna be the same. So darker here, lighter there. So we're gonna get a sort of light line down the middle. If you find that difficult, you can um, do an even color across the whole thing and then use your eraser to create the lighter line. That's a different idea. So here, I'm going to fade it 
to the sort of center of the handle here. So I'm going to make it darker down here near the cup, just like I did with the other one really, and darker here. And that's going to be our orange and pink striped cup. Now this one I have a very different sort of idea. Now my husband has lent me his um, stencils and this um, is um, a rope ring and it's got all sorts of circles on it which is very useful and I'm going to draw some circles like polka dots on this mug and then um, colour it in. Now I'm going to do my circles again in the colour of pencil that I'm going to colour them in and I'm going to do my circles in this yellow, in the sapphire yellow can see that. So now as Johanna tells us do some coming off the edge of the cup so this one is just going to be there. I'm going to colour the whole thing in with the stencil in place. I find that easier. There we go and then one here and just colour it. Now I want this colour to be quite hard almost burnished in so that, oh my mobile phone's ringing, never mind, so that it, um, when I colour my background colour, it, it almost repels it. And one on the edge here. I can't even remember what size I am using, I'm sort of alternating between six and eight, which probably isn't, or oh, eight and nine, sorry, which probably isn't a very good idea. I'm not going to worry about my phone. It's usually um, um, just scam calls. Now I can barely see these circles. I don't know if you can. You can probably see the light shining off the pencil. That's quite handy. So I'm going to do a half on here. On the sur on the saucer, I will leave it plain. There we go. That's. Uh, we need one there. I'm just going to do a really little bit. That. Oops. It's quite fun doing this and then one over here. I think this is a Kath Kidston styley. What I'd really like is a template or stencil with hearts on. It'd be really nice, but I don't have one. So that's my background, and they're not even, they're sort of all over the place. Um I don't know if I'm gonna put one in there. I might put one in there. I don't know, maybe a half on there. Anyway, I'm going to finish that later and then I'm going to do the background of the cup. Um, probably because we've got pink and orange, we've got orange, I'll probably do this one in green. So I might use the um, moss green to do the background and I will use the same technique as for this one. And I will probably do the handle in the yellow. It won't show up though. I'll probably do it maybe a bit of green and yellow together or the lighter green and the same with the saucer but you'll see how that develops um, when I finish. So that's a different idea on how to do one. Then we have this one. Now I have a, a fun stencil here which has got letters on it and I thought it might be fun to put some letters on the cup, although the stencil doesn't want to fit on the page very well. And I thought we could do them at funny angles. So I'm going to do this one in green so that we can see it. My pencil is too fat to fit into the... Uh... Hmm. There is a problem there, this thick chunky pencil. I'm going to have to grab a different pencil. Um, I'll just stop the video and go and find one, bear with me. Right, back very quickly. I've found this um, Stedler Ergosoft pencil, it's really thin, this is the number 57. It's really similar colour to this, I think, or as similar as I can find. So we're going to put the stencil back down, and this one should fit in because it's got a really slim and sharp end. And I think this stencil came with the geometry set that the children have. You can see there's the R, oh, it looks really scruffy, doesn't it? I'm going to fill it in now, take it across to there, and sort of fill it out. I think I must have moved it. Mm. And make that a bit thicker so that it sort of works better. So there's the R, and I'm going to do an A. I'll do a little A, 
And uh, I'm going to mix it up a bit. I'm not going to just spell out my name. So here's the A. So I'm going to fill in that curve bit like that. Now, if you don't have stencils, you might be confident enough writing some letters on. So you could colour the background first and then write them over in a pen. I don't know if you've got good writing. I'm going to tilt one that way, like that. My C. Obviously, you don't have to spell out a name. You could just do random, random letters. I'm thinking in the middle, up the top maybe. Oh, that looks a bit short. We'll take that top up. Looks more like an N. Perhaps it doesn't matter. And the E. I mm, should put the E down in the corner here. Facing that way. Oh, it's quite hard to... We need to fill in that bit. Now the back of this cup I'm going to do I probably and the L um, um, I'm trying to think well I don't want to do it the same as the one above which you may remember it's got this green colour in it well the um the green colour from the, there we go. So there's my name all messed about. It's quite fun. Um, so I won't um, do it green and because this one look is green and peach colour. So I'll have to do it pink. So this will be a pink mug and I might do a green handle or and a green saucer. But you'll see. Okay, next idea I need to I can't get my book up any further. Mm. There's a challenge, isn't there? Right, we're going to have to do some upside down cups because I, uh, I can't get my book any further. Now this cup, I had some ideas for doing a um, vertical stripe. So on the stripey cup we did, which I can't show you now because it won't fit under, we did horizontal stripes and they were quite thick. I thought the vertical stripes could be quite thin. So I'm going to grab my ruler, which uh, is run away to the corner of the desk again, and have a measure. Now this one is again, it's about three and a half centimetres, so I'm going to do each stripe half a centimetre. And hmm, that one was orange and pink, so I think we'll do this one. We haven't got a green one yet, so we'll do maybe just the two shades of green. So again, we can just mark it out. I'll leave that bottom piece and just mark out. I'm just going to make sure. I think it's better to do it on the edge. Half centimetre. Very lightly. You can do this in a um, graphite pencil if you'd rather. We'll do that. we we'll do it on that side as well. What that means is that you can join them up. I realise that not everyone uses centimetres, some people use inches, I'm a bit rubbish with inches, so... so oh, <laughs> we've got a very extended stripe there. I've just realised that I was going to do them the other way, that way, and I haven't, I've done them across. Oh dear, never mind, we shall uh, rub out that and, uh, and uh, just cope. We could, ah, I've got an idea, I've got an idea. How long across are we? We are four centimetres to half centimetre again. I've got an idea. 
So let's just do this quickly. You might want to do measure it at the top as well and join up your lines. We'll do a checkerboard type effect on this one. And we'll colour this one, this one, this one with this pen, so, and then that one, and then back to that. Yeah? So we've got a checkerboard cup. There we go. It's a bit different to what I was going to do, but there we go. Now, my husband has also lent me this section of, we've got hexagon, we've got, oops, we've got pentagons, we've got triangles. And we've got ovals. I quite like the triangles. This is a helix set. Apparently they all come together in a set. What do I think? It's, and now I know he's got them, I shall be stealing them all the time. And I thought that maybe just a few um, more, another geometric shape one might be fun. Um, instead of a dots, we can do some triangles. I'm just going to draw these in um, pink, yeah. These are quite big. I might do a slightly smaller. I think that might overwhelm our cup a little bit, but I still want them fairly big, like that. And I'm going to overlap them. Some of them, not all of them. I don't know why. Just because it's a bit different. what size I was using then about yeah, that was it I don't know easily distracted there we go I'm just going to do that many I shall colour them in with this pink and then do a background probably green because we've got um, I'm trying to do them alternate them a little bit so they're all a bit different in each column and row although they've got green there so I might mm, don't know I shall think about that so I should just colour those in as solid shapes and then do this background so it's darker on the edges and faded in to make the cup look more rounded. So that's that idea. I had another idea. I'm just going to try and find it because I wrote it down on my computer and it has disappeared. Uh, ah, yes. My last idea was to do a blended colour and I was going to show you how to do it. So we've got this cup left. Now, I was going to blend from pink to orange, and that's quite tricky because they're not. If it's easy to blend from a light, easier I should say, from a light pink to a dark pink or a light pink to a dark or um, a light orange to a dark orange because they're quite similar. But these colours aren't similar, so I'm going to show you how to blend them. Now, I've been going on for quite a long time. So I think doing this whole cup is going to take quite a while, but maybe we will just do it. So I'm going to start on this side with the pink. And the idea is to put your hardest layer here on this side. So I'm, I'm pressing quite hard. These um, artesas are quite soft, so you can press hardish and not damage the paper, but you do need to be careful. So you can see I've got quite a dark line. I'm going to start to fade now, so I'm going to hold my pencil a bit further back, lie it on its side, and just try to um, do a more gentle action to reduce the amount of colour coming down on the paper. I've got a line there, so we want to blend that in, and the circular action helps, I find. My aim is to fade it down towards the centre, but I am going to overlap the middle because I need to overlap the two colours to blend them in together. So there we go. We're going to go right down there. And you can see how that fades. This bit is quite a lot of light. So I'm going to go back over this sort of area here to add in a little bit more colour. So we've got more of an obvious fade effect going on and you can keep layering up until you're happy but don't worry because that isn't our final bit of pink now we're going in with the orangey color this is the peach I'm going to do the same thing so on this side put down our heavy layer but this is a lighter color so you're not going to get such a dark 
um, colour, but that's okay. Now when these two colours come together, they're quite pretty. They're, that's down here, like this. And then I need to start to reduce my pressure on the pencil to less layers. And mix it into the pink. And our taser does blend together really well. Some pencils are easier to blend than others. Um, the Arteza Expert, I find, are um, probably slightly easier than these, but I, uh, I've had these for longer, so I'm a bit more familiar with using them. So well, that helps me a little bit. So I'm going all the way across to the pink area, like that. And I'm going to darken this edge, or layer it up. I should say. Um, I find the Stedler Ergosoft blend really nicely but with a large area it's hard to make them not look sort of stripy as it were. So uh, I would use the Arteza. Castles are nice for this sort of thing too. Polys you have to do lots of layers but the results are really stunning. Um, Prisma I'm not a big fan of. I know people find them really easy to blend. With a Prisma, if you put it down quite thickly and, you, and you've got the two colours overlapping and you start to do this, it actually moves the colour around on the paper. So it makes it quite easy to blend it. Or you can use a blending um, tool of some sort. And you can see there we've got the graduation of colour going from pink to orange, which is quite fun. Now I'm going to leave that there because I'll go on forever. I could keep going on and on but I'm gonna as I say finish these off I will turn these back I will try and get a photo of these the right way up well I can always turn it around in my editing software but um, let me uh, just turn it around anyway so you can see what we've done so I can remind you so we've got this one here which um, obviously needs a bit more um, color on there and then that's our green one we've got our striped one so we're gonna go dark pink and um, the orange and then dark pink orange dark pink on that one this one's going to have a green background whoops sorry you can't see it a green background on that one um we've got i haven't just can't think what background i was going to do on that I'm probably yellow or maybe not i should have a think about it um we've done those two because i can tip my book up a little bit oh that's a funny angle isn't it so we've got those three left to do that one's our checkerboard with two shades of green all green and yellow and this one mm, not sure I might mix some colors like that I think that's really pretty that's what Johanna did in her live so I might do something like that but I'm not sure so I'm gonna as I say finish them off and uh, I may come back and record another video and talk you through what I've done or I might just take photos it depends what time of day it is when I get it done because and who's here and uh, it might be too many kids here and um, etc husband noisy people here and disturbing me but there we go that's a few now i find that's far less daunting for me and i hope that's the case for you as well if you were a little bit um daunted on your own trying to fill in the other cups i mean the other idea is of course to go buy johanna's beautiful ones look at those and just copy those across if you can or use your how to draw inky wonderlands to copy some of her because she goes to, tells you how to draw these things so you can use that to help you but you know i've just kept it really simple and i hope that's been helpful i've had fun and i'm looking forward to finishing them but i've got to get back to work boohoo so uh, i will finish them later and make sure there's a photo for you so uh, thank you so much for watching and happy coloring Hi everyone, I thought I would just come and show you um, my finished page. I'm afraid um, I have got the camera off the tripod so that I can show you all of it. Um, I'm just going to change my lamp down a little bit so you can see the colour a little bit better. So this is the first mug that we did. Sorry, it's very wibbly wobbly. 
Um, I just went over the orange a little bit more just to uh, darken it on the edges so I didn't do a lot with that one. This one, um, remember we had just done the top um, line um, of pink so I just filled in all the rest and um, made the handle orange. I think we did the handle actually so I just sort of made it stripey. This one here I added another couple of dots of um, yellow but because I couldn't properly see what I was doing I made a bit of a boo-boo there in the middle and they're very close together I just think they're kissing so they're rather cute but uh, just do be careful if you don't want them together if you draw um, the handle looks like I haven't done it I have I'm trying to zoom in it's uh, it's yellow look um, if you want to be absolutely sure you can see what you're doing don't use yellow and uh, that will make it easier or shine your light right on a waxy pencil and it reflects. But anyway, um, it was a bit tricky to see through my stencil. So anyway, that's me with that one. Um, with this one, I had done the letters. So I coloured over the whole cup in yellow. Now, what was quite good about using yellow, and um, again, the handle's yellow, it's quite tricky to see, was that I could colour right over the green. It didn't matter. So it made it really easy. And then I just did a little bit of the pink, no, uh, sorry, orangey, peachy colour on the edges just to... Uh, make it a little bit more interesting and I faded it towards the middle which is what I've been trying to do those are the two that I did with Johanna so this is the one with the triangles I colored them in quite vibrantly with the pink and uh, then did the base and the handle the same and the main part of the cup in the lighter green we had the lime green which again I used on this one I used the lime and the dark green you can see my error if I zoom in um, I don't know if you can actually, sorry, I'm getting really blurred. Um, I accidentally delete, um, rubbed a little bit out with my eraser and it had some pink on. So one of the light green squares has gone slightly pink, but never mind. Once it stains the paper, you can't get it off. Um, and I also did them in reverse. So I tapped all some of the ones that I said I was going to do in dark green. You can still see the dots on them. And uh, I did them in light green, so and I couldn't erase the dots because they stained the paper again. So a bit of an error there. <laughs> With this one, we'd nearly done it. I just did the handle in an orange colour. So there's our whole page. Um, sorry about the wobbles again, but hopefully it can let you just have a look and um, see all of them finished. So uh, that's me. I'm going to edit the video now and hopefully it will be ready for you quite soon. So uh, happy colouring.